What is up YouTube, Jamos here, and today we're going to upgrade the Dell XPS 15 notebook. This computer was released in 2015, and we're going to upgrade it with modern parts to see how well it runs. Let's get started. Okay, let's begin with a boot test. This will show us how long it takes the computer to boot into Windows and run an application. For this example, we're going to use Chrome, so let's go ahead and get started. This boot test only includes Windows. It does not have any of the add-ons that are typically installed on a computer. Also, this is the original hardware, so there's no upgrades yet or anything. This is how the computer was bought. Yeah, as you can see, this computer needs an upgrade. With that being said, let's go ahead and begin the upgrades. We'll start with the media creation tool. Okay, to get the tool, just go to Google and type in media creation tool and go to the website. Make sure it's the official one and download the tool. Once you're done with that, get a flash drive that's at least eight gigs and make sure it's formatted in NTFS. We demonstrate how to do that here. Everything should be correct as default. So this, make sure it's on NTFS and then click quick format and then format. Okay, once that's done, we can go back to the media creation tool and run it. The tool usually takes some time, so let it do its thing. A user license agreement is gonna appear, let's go ahead and accept that. And then from there, just let it do its thing We'll be back once the menu for setting it up appears. Now that we're at the setup screen, let's go ahead and get started. Usually the default is correct, but make sure it's the right version of Windows. Then you're going to select Create USB Media. Make sure it's the right drive because you don't want to accidentally format the wrong drive and delete everything on it. All right, now that we selected the drive, let's go ahead and let Windows download. This usually takes some time. So we're going to go ahead and put this in time lapse. So we'll be back once the download is complete. Once the download is done, it's going to immediately start creating the tool. This is based on your hardware, so speeds may vary. For us, it took us quite some time because we're on older hardware. So we're gonna go ahead and enter time-lapse mode. We'll be back once the media tool is finished.
All right, now the tool is done, we can go ahead and close it and remove the flash drive. This will be used to boot into Windows later on. All right, before we do the upgrade, let's go ahead and check out the system specs. This is the base version of this Dell XPS 15. So as you see on the screen, this is what the computer comes with when you buy it. This computer came out in 2016, so the specs are pretty old. Okay, let's begin. First thing we're gonna do is go into the system BIOS. This will allow us to check greater details of what's in the computer. And we also need to change some settings in the BIOS to make this upgrade work properly. So to get into the BIOS, turn off the computer. And then when it boots up, tap the F2 key until you see a special menu pop up, like so. Clicking on system information, we get greater detail of what's inside the computer. As you can see, we have a sixth generation Intel Core i5, eight gigs of RAM, and an HDD hard drive. Yes, an HDD hard drive. This is at 5400 RPM, so that definitely needs to get upgraded for sure. I went ahead and checked the battery health of this computer. Unfortunately, I was unable to get a battery in time for this upgrade, so we'll have to do it at a later time. But as you see, it tells you the battery and the capacity, just basic information. I plugged in the charger just to make sure the computer doesn't die when we change the BIOS settings. The main reason why we entered the BIOS is for this setting right here. In this setting, we're gonna change the default, which is what Dell uses they combined a faster hard drive, M2, with a slower one to make the computer run better. We're going to turn off this setting and just use the M2 drive to get the max speed all the time. This is the best way to run it, so let's go ahead and change it to ACHI and use the other hard drive slot as an external or internal storage. So let's go ahead and change that now. Go ahead and select yes, and then you can disable user custom settings and then hit apply. And then exit once you're done. Now the computer is going to try and boot just to show you what happens if you change it, but don't change the hardware. It's going to go into a boot loop. So you need to change the hardware to match the settings, which is only one M2 drive and no other hard drive with Windows on it. So let's go ahead and uh, begin the upgrade. Okay, this is the tools you're gonna need for the upgrade. Starting with the M2 SSD drive. This is PCIe. This is basically the fastest hard drive you can buy at the moment. So we're gonna go ahead and use that as our main storage. Then we have the RAM, 16 gigs. This is a bit overkill for this build, but it'll be good for future proofing if we upgrade the laptop. Next up is the media creation drive. This is where Windows is uh, stored. So we'll be booting from that to install it on the new hard drive once everything is installed properly. As you see, it's a 32 gig. 8 gigs is the minimum, so we'll be using that. Next up is a micro bit set. You're going to need this to take apart the laptop. The screws are pretty small, so make sure you have a size that will fit the screw. There's a Phillips head and then a T5 screw. Okay, go ahead and turn over the laptop and let's begin taking it apart. In the middle, you'll see two Phillips head screws. Let's go ahead and take those out.
This is the other bit you're going to need. This is the T5 one. This screw is used for the entire exterior of the laptop. So we'll go ahead and use this and remove those screws. Should be 10 screws in total, bordering the whole perimeter of the laptop. Once you remove the final screw, there's a bunch of clips you have to get past to remove the bottom panel. This may take a little bit of force, but do be careful. And there you have it. The bottom panel is removed and immediately you can see all the components that can be upgraded. So first up, we're just going to remove the battery. It's always a safe thing to do. So let's go ahead and remove the connector for that. Turning the laptop over. So you have your M2 right there. You have your regular hard drive. And then the RAM slots are right above the battery. The laptop has two con battery configurations. So if you want to stick with the dual hard drive setup, you can keep the same battery size. They do sell a battery pack that fits the whole bottom of the laptop if you're just using the M2. So we're going to go ahead and start with the RAM first, since it's the easiest. As you see, they kind of pop up. So once that happens, you just lift them out of place. Go ahead and prepare the new RAM real quick. Just lift them out of place and then insert the new RAM in the same manner. And just like that, the RAM has been upgraded. It's that simple. These are what the old modules look like. Pretty generic, two, four gig modules here. Just gonna go ahead and save those for maybe another build. All right, next up is the M2 drive. Let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing of it. It's a Samsung 970 Evo. This is more, more than likely overkill for this computer, but we can always use it for any other laptop we buy. That's what it looks like. Now I do recommend getting a heat sink with this as well. Unfortunately, we couldn't find one at the time, but if you can, 
definitely get a heat sink for that because it does get really, really hot. And here's the manual for it. All right, to remove the M2, it's pretty simple. Just use a Phillips head and unscrew the mounting screw that you see. Once you do that, it's just gonna pop up. And you just lift it at, out of the socket. As you see, it's kind of put in two. They must have used a really generic M2 as this is by default a cache drive. So they probably picked a really generic one. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and insert the new hard drive. You can only go in one way, so make sure it is the right way. And then once you insert it, press down and then screw it in place. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the HDD drive. We have to do this because we cannot have two boot drives installed at once. And besides, this thing is pretty slow. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove it entirely. To do so, remove the four screws that are in each corner on the um, bracket that you see. And then you should be able to take it out of the laptop. Okay, once you remove the screws, you can go ahead and lift the bracket 
and then the hard drive itself. And yeah, that's it. The ancient 5400 hard drive. Now you can replace it with an SSD to extend the storage if you want to, but in this case, we're not going to. We're just gonna leave it open until we can get a battery to replace the open space on the bottom. For now, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the mounting piece for it, just to keep it in the laptop so we don't lose it. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and reconnect the battery. Make sure everything is nice and snug. And before we put this cover back on, since it's open, we might as well give it a nice clean. And dust out the fans and all the components before we put the back panel back on. All right, once you put the panel back on, just go ahead and put the screws and then we will begin the Windows install process. Okay, with the upgrades complete, let's go ahead and install a fresh version of Windows 10 on the internal SSD. We'll go ahead and insert the Media Creation Tool flash drive and on boot up, press F12 until you get to the boot screen. Here, you're going to select the flash drive to boot from. Make sure it's the correct flash drive. And you'll be greeted with the Windows 10 logo and the setup screen begins. Go ahead and just follow the steps. All right, agree to the license agreement. That no one reads. Okay, here you're going to select the partition you want to format. Of course, there's only one drive in here, but make sure if you have two drives that it is the M2 SSD. Go ahead and select it. And Windows will begin the install process. This takes quite some time, so we're going to speed it up slightly. The video is running at two times speed, so this process does take quite some time. So we're just going to go ahead and let it run through its paces and we'll be back when something new happens. All right, we're on the final part of the install. So after this portion, the computer is going to reboot and hopefully if everything goes well, we should be able to set up windows. Once again, this process takes quite some time, so be patient. We'll be back when this booting screen completes.
All right, this should be the final boot screen and we should now see Windows 10 set up. There we go. And it's just as simple as just following the on-screen instructions to set up Windows 10. We'll be back when, once that completes. Okay, Windows is almost done installing, so we'll go ahead and let this finish so we can get into the computer and start updating the system and getting all the drivers needed to make this computer normal again. So we'll be back once this setting up screen is complete. Alrighty, and the clean install of Windows 10 is successful. But as you can see on screen, the Wi-Fi adapter was not able to be detected. So that means we have to manually get the drivers from Dell.com and install them ourselves. This is usually rare as Windows finds the drivers for you. And all you have to do is go to a Windows update and update the whole computer and everything should run smoothly. But that's not the case here. So let's go ahead and get the drivers and try to install them manually. We'll be back when that's successful. Okay, after many hours of trying, we finally got the Wi-Fi adapter or driver installed. This is a rare case, but Windows didn't recognize it for some reason, so we had to manually get it. Once you get the driver, you can then go to Windows Update and download these updates, and it will find everything else for you, including all the Dell software and stuff. This one did take quite a bit. So make sure you have the drivers on hand before you do a clean install of Windows. Okay, now we're gonna go to about this computer and check out the specs of this computer with the new upgrades that we just did. Let's get a little zoom in on it. And as you can see, it does recognize the new RAM amount, which is 16 instead of eight. Uh, of course, we can't change the processor much and the SSD should be there instead of the HDD hard drive. And that is the list of the specs for about this computer. So let's go ahead and shut this down and we are gonna to get to the final test, the boot test. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see how big of a performance jump this computer has with these new upgrades. Now keep in mind, this is the latest build of Windows 10, and it is a clean install. We're going to go ahead and launch Chrome, like how we did last time. Oh wow, what a big difference. So there you have it, a five-year-old computer is now running like it just came out last year. With these minor upgrades, you can make any old computer run like new. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.